Let's see. Let's start a poll, huh? Let's start a poll. What should we draw next time? Start that. Hello, everybody. How are you guys doing today? Today, we will be drawing. We will be drawing in about five minutes. Actually, in a couple minutes, we'll start. We're going to be learning how to draw something. We just have to decide what. <clears throat> what should we do today? You guys have a, You guys know what you guys want to learn? Let me know. H R U. Oh, how are you? Uh, I am doing great. Um, I'm still just killing time until I leave for Scotland. So it's chilling, relaxing. Um, Eating a lot of food. <laughs> so, what should we learn today? Yesterday we learned about the human body. So, we studied a little bit of how it connects. How you should be looking at the clavicle area. We talked about how legs can be very subjective to you know different shapes. But as long as you know the placement of things, how things work. We also talked about feet. And we talked about how they're made, how you can start visualizing them differently, and how different ways of simplifying lead you to the same path if you understand what you're drawing. Uh, we already did feed yesterday. So if you want to go look at this YouTube, uh, it's the sketch, sketch stream number 70. So if you go and you uh, watch that, and then you, I also have the... A hundred hand challenge. If you want to draw hands better, we drew a hundred hands uh, not too long ago. So that is also on my YouTube. And that's like a four hours for like long stream. So you'll learn everything you need to learn about hands. Okay, so I showed you guys how to draw feet, how to turn that into actual different types of shoes and claws and like how to make that apply to different animals, how to just distort them, play around with them and how to even see them from a small point of view or a big point of view and how that doesn't really affect it, right? As long as you understand where the placement comes in from, you can draw your feet anytime you want. And it's easier to draw them like that because you can simplify them into simple shapes. So that is what we had for yesterday, but now we need a theme for today. <clears throat> so before, before we continue, I want you guys to go pa 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 and I want you guys to share the stream. I want you guys to share it because that's the way that it supposedly reaches other people. So if you want to help me and you want to learn something from me today, cool. Uh, help me out too. Help me reach more people. So I am going to start. And let's see. What what are you struggling at? Can you do nose and lips? Hell yeah, I can do nose and lips. Uh, let's do noses and lips. <clears throat> All right, so this one's not going to be on YouTube. So we're going to have to make a bunch of noses here. And then we're going to... Actually, no, I'll just upload it to YouTube from here. So it'll be an upload, not a stream to YouTube. But it's it should be fine. So we're going to do noses. And this will be sketch stream number 71. Noses and what? And lips. Okay, so noses and lips are two very interesting parts of the body. And each one of them has its own little traits that are going to help you be able to figure them out a little bit better. Right, let me zoom in a little bit. So noses and lips can make or break your character. So learning how to draw them, especially for female characters, is going to be very important. Learning how to connect them, right? How do you go from your nose onto your lip and how do you attack this area is very important too. Let's 
So let's do lips and let's do, well, it's going to be lips uh, and mouths, I guess, and noses. So let's start with the noses first. Nose. Noses can easily be broken down into a diamond. If you're drawing any sort of nose, this is essentially the shape that you want to get. Why? Because this shape gives you a bottom and it gives you two sides as well as a middle line, right? The middle line is going to be the middle of your nose bridge. This area right here is the underside of your nose. So you can just draw your nostrils there. And then this little curvature you get is going to be the top of your nose and the ball of your nose. So you can simplify the nose very quickly by doing that. Now, if you want to draw different types of noses, you just change that diamond around according to what you need. If you need like a really long, stretchy nose, you stretch it out like that. You still have all the angles that you need. And if you need it to look up, you can do it too because you have all the positionings for all those spaces, right? You can make them wide or, you know, certain kinds of people. You can make it small for other kinds of people, right? There's, you can put as much detail as you want or as little as you want, but as long as you understand the shape, this is a three quarter or profile. So it gives you a nice range to play with. And it allows you to be able to draw in 3D before you even have to draw any detail. Right, so that's what's happening when you're drawing your nose like a diamond. Diamond. You, When you do it like this, you get used to the different planes, right? You get used to seeing things in three quarters like this, as opposed to just drawing like a little swoopy. Don't just swoopy it. Figure out the actual dimensions of your nose and then build it up from there. Don't just do swoopies. No. Stop thinking like this. Start thinking in volume. Don't just draw in style. Don't just draw in style draw with form okay that is what's going to get you to that next level of understanding for these basic shapes noses are not necessarily really hard they really aren't when you break them down into the most basic parts of the nose, you end up with these certain parts. Okay, and I'm going to exaggerate them so you guys understand what I'm seeing whenever I am drawing them. So when you're drawing a nose, I normally start with the little ball of the nose or how far out it's going to come out. And I normally do that like a diamond. Okay, so I'm like, pew, 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 pew. then I identify the top and the bottom with that diamond. Then I go and I look at the, how much meatiness this little wingy part has, right? This is a shape on its own. So I need to draw that shape on its own connected to the nostril that's underneath my nose. The front of your nose, the front of your diamond, depending on what type of nose you have, will be a little bit round because there's a little tiny bit of cartilage there that splits up the nose. From there, that connects to cartilage 
that connects to your nose canal in your skull. Okay, so when you have your skull, right? So you have like a rudimentary skull. What happens here is that the nose bridge actually has a little bit of a bone thing to it. It's very slight, but it's right where the eye line and the forehead line break, right? So, and then from there, that's where your nose comes from. And it normally goes to a little bit it just stays within that cavity. Like, regardless of how big you draw it, it's going to stay within that cavity. And then you have your teeth and your mouth. And... Yeah. So, what you got to remember is that that little hole in your face is essentially the same thing like like an arm socket, right? Or like a hip socket. If you're drawing hips, you draw your legs from the hip bone area, right? Because it's coming from this hole, right? So when you're drawing noses, it's the same thing. You have your skeleton and you have your nose gap. The nose is going to fit within that space. It's going to always go back to that same area. It's going to curve around to create that shape, regardless of what the shape is. So you can have a lot of fun with noses. So the next time that you're drawing, just instead of just identifying where your eyes are, identify where your nose is going to start and end, and then follow that midline to your head. And you can draw a little bit easier noses like that. Remember, it's all basic perspective. So this nose right there is essentially like a calf cone. Like an ice cream cone. Just like melting. That's essentially what you're drawing. That's another way of seeing. Um, so yeah, that is, like noses are very interesting. They come out of the nose socket. Nose hole. Nose hole. All right, let's do some highlighting here. So, but we can get this. What is my highlighter? There it is. Highlighter. So how's everybody doing today? We have 154 people in the chat and almost nobody talking. So that would that needs to change a little bit so that we can actually know what direction we're going to do. And if you guys are understanding what I'm doing, if you guys are not comprehending it, please let me know and let me know what's not clicking so that I can actually adjust the lesson if needed. Uh, remember, not everybody learns the same way. And I want to be an active participant in understanding how people learn so that I can teach better. So, you know, if something's not making sense right now, can you please let me know? We're teaching noses and lips today. So any questions about noses and lips will be answered. Yeah, yeah, I'll draw, uh, like, I'll draw an actual face and I'm like, I'll draw it. Let's see. So can you give tips about drawing human noses? That's what I'm doing. <laughs> That's literally what I've been doing. What do you think I've been doing? <laughs> can you draw a nose for a giant? Okay, let's do a couple of examples because I think you guys are like losing the, the simplicity of this. Uh, let's say we have two different shape heads, right? Three different shape heads. Fuck it. The nose is really going to determine a couple aspects right away. If I draw a nose right here, right? If I just draw 
a nose of different sizes on each one of these guys. And since the nose is a diamond, I can dictate how that look is going to be immediately. These have a top and a bottom. So I already know a couple things from just that. This is going to lead to my nose bridge. So I know that the gap between my nose and my eyes is here. So my eyes are here immediately. I know that my eyes are there. This is going to determine where the nose and the bridge for your nose bridge change shape. So you end up with something like an hourglass. Okay, And that hourglass leads you to your mask that we have talked about before. The mask is a representation of your eye sockets. So now I have, just from that little triangle and diamond, I have my eye sockets, I have my eyes, I have my nose bridge, and I can probably just draw my teeth coming down from there as well. So all of this, all of that information from just that one little diamond, because it's all placement, right? It's all like a puzzle. You just need to learn what piece goes next to the other piece. So it's do that. Draw the center lines to help them, um, I guess. I don't even use center lines, though. That's the thing. I don't do this little method of center dividing. I just don't do that. I don't do that. <laughs> you don't the thing is look i'm gonna explain something really easy this is a basic principle of drawing that is basic that is the basic this is something that within like a year of doing art you should automatically do in your head right you should learn how to map out your sections in your head a little bit easier than having to always mark them. What you are explaining, yes, it is a beginner's thing, but it's honestly just always doing this to shapes doesn't do anything. You know what does something? Doing this, going around the shape. This helps you. This doesn't. And I'm not saying that it wouldn't help. Yeah, it would help. But when I'm trying to teach a, I'm trying to teach a lesson on, uh, on, on a different way of seeing it. So I'm not trying to teach you the same regurgitated shit that you've heard from everybody else. Right? So if you want to just listen to the same crap that everybody else teaches... Then just go listen to any other video on YouTube. Yeah. But I'm trying to show you guys a different way of using it. So let's keep on going with that. Diamond leads to nose bridge. And it ends up being like a little bit of a this cat kind of shape. Okay. This leads you to your mask, which leads you to your eye sockets. It also leads you to the side of your face because the side of your mask will lead you to your chin. So it gives you a lot of depth without really thinking too much about it. And then once you have all those mapping points, then it's just a matter of thinking what you want to do with your design. I have my teeth already, so all I got to do is add that gap and negative space, and I have that. I can go super cartoony instead, though, if I wanted to. You could go more realistic. Or super stylized. At this point, if you want to add anything like accessories, all of them are shapes on top of it. Right, All of them are basic shapes. Anything you add is a basic shape on top. It's not a squiggle. It's not a line. It's not a... It's not a... Think of everything as shapes. Even mustaches. Okay? 
And then just little by little, with your knowledge of anatomy, you can start coming up with pretty cool stylized characters. And that is how your knowledge of anatomy and perspective lead you to become able to create your own styles. This is nice. This helps you. But this without an understanding of depth means absolute nothing. ¿Cómo te haces un rastro de un anciano, en especial cuando tiene ojos hundidos y sin arrugas? Okay, so he's asking, how do you draw a face of an ancient man? And I can do that because we're talking about noses, right? And a very big aspect of noses is the cartilage in it. So what happens as we age with the cartilage? Well, as you get older, I'll do a little chart right here. As you get older, your cartilage starts to droop and it starts getting dragged down by gravity so at first you might have like a nice little tiny nose in time that cartilage starts weighing it down starts getting heavier and heavier as you get older It just starts dragging down. And then that combined with wrinkles ends up giving you the edge that you need. So that's essentially what happens. Like the nose just gains, like the cartilage just droops. Cartilage drop droops over time. So this is like eighty years, and it's like five years, and that's like I don't know forty years. So that's essentially what it happens. That's how you would draw an ancient face. Like you would just draw the cartilage or like the nose very like scraggly with a lot of wrinkles and shit. Okay, uh, okay let's see. So we have 171 people on the chat. I need you guys to share the chat so more people join us. Uh, that is the way that TikTok works. If you guys share the live... More people join us. If you guys don't share the live, no one joins us. It doesn't know what to do. So if you guys could share it, that'd be amazing. If you guys want to like it, that'd be great. If you guys want to go subscribe, that'd be amazing. And if you guys want to support and you guys are actually learning what I'm like from anything, I have books and I have cool things that you guys can get if you guys want to buy them. Right? The link is in the, my Instagram. It's right here in TikTok. You guys, if you guys want to get some cool books, you guys can find them really easy. All right. So let's go on to, let's finish up a couple more noses. How about that? Cartoony noses, even, even super cartoony noses, right? Even something like this. Something along the lines like this for like a TV character or whatever. Something like this still has to be seen as something with volume. The reason why is because when you go into shading and when you start doing all those things, this is going to be necessary. And I'm going to show you guys that. Because all these little, like, what you learn to do is you learn to subdivide so that you can shade better. So you can determine where the shadows hit. So you can determine like depth and stuff like that, right? So even if the character is super stupidly simple, knowing this helps you because it just makes you a better artist. It makes you visualize things better. Even things like eyebrows are going to have depth. Okay? Even stuff like that. 
Can you talk about the nose placement? Teeth placement after the noses. Uh, we're not. Oh yeah, we're gonna go into teeth because we're gonna do lips here on the other side. So we are doing noses here, and then I'm gonna talk about lips, and then we're gonna talk about how they connect. So we're gonna talk about the little mustachey part right here. But patience, patience. All right. So let's see. Let's see. Well, let's draw a couple more noses. Let's do a scrunch up nose. We can do, even this helps you learn how to draw beaks as well, by the way. Like toucan lips and stuff like that. Or toucan, like, beaks. Right, that's the same concept that is happening with beaks. So it's the same thing, and you can have a lot of fun playing around with some birds now. Uh, let's see. I left for all and a little, and I missed so much. This will, this one's going to be on YouTube. So I'm not streaming to YouTube right now. So I'm just going to upload this video onto YouTube. Uh, yeah, they don't get the stream, but normally it's only about like 11 people there. So <laughs> as opposed to like 200 or a couple thousand that show up here. So it's, it's just priorities. Can your next lesson be on the side views or something like that? Because I struggle with the side view. So let's talk a little bit, like I'll give you a mini lesson on that, okay? I'm going to walk you through what basic profile, and I'm going to tell you exactly what to look for when you're drawing a profile, mostly because it actually fits into this too. So first of all, you can have whatever shape face you want. Okay, these are all going to be profiles. The next step is to... Draw up until only your nose. Draw up until the point where you would just draw your nose. You have your eyes and your forehead. This should be an easy enough transition. Your eyes should be somewhere in the middle of this shape, right? Your nose is going to be underneath your eyes, and your forehead is going to be above your eyes. So nose underneath, forehead above your eyes and your eye line in the middle. So wherever you draw your eyes, you have a couple things that go in the top and you have a couple things that go in the bottom. So the nose goes underneath the eyes and the forehead goes above the eyes. I would consider the eyebrows part of the eyes because they attach to the top of your eye. So if you have your eyeball, your eyebrows are on the eyebrow ridge right here on top. There isn't that much spacing in between them. What normally shows spacing is the eyelid, right? The eyelid is what creates spacing in between these, but that's not really the case. So whenever you draw your eyeball, your eyelid, your eyebrows are not going to be very far behind above that. So I don't consider them part of anything except part of the eye. So above the eye, we have your forehead. How big do you want your forehead? And then, and then, after you finish drawing your character up until the nose, regardless of what type of characters you're drawing, right? So you're drawing a, like, a cute little pinup. Whatever character you're drawing, it should be a lot easier to draw up to this point without thinking that your drawing is off. Now, where do you put your ear? Well, your ear goes around, if you have your skull, if you're thinking about your skeletal system, you have your cheekbone into your temple, and then there's a little bit of space, a little bit, a tiny bit of space, and then your ear happens. Okay, A little bit of space past your cheekbone, and then your ear happens. Your ear is connected to your jaw. So I want my cheekbone to be about that big. A little bit of space. I have my ear. Cheekbone, a little bit of space. And have my ear. 
and then just round out the shape so you have a little bit of space on behind the head at least. But if you're going for a more realistic approach, it's going to be considerably, because you have your brain here. That's where your brain goes. It can't be that small. That's where your brain goes. Right? So when you're doing a more stylized, just keep those proportions in mind and you'll be fine. Again, placement is more important than actual proportions. Uh, you can draw something with like the weirdest proportions in the world and make it look right. By just knowing where things go. Right? There's nothing. It's just a matter of understanding placement. And where things come out from. And stuff like that. That is what leads you to come up with really cool designs. It's not necessarily like. Over exaggerating for exaggerating sake, it's understanding the anatomy enough to be able to exaggerate later. That is that is how you develop your style. You learn anatomy enough so that you can deconstruct it with your perspective knowledge, so that you can create your own style. It's not copying other people's work. It's not, uh, you know, just taking a little bit of everybody. It's learning and understanding what you're drawing so that you can deconstruct it with your what is the youngest grade that i've taught i have taught all the way from uh kindergarten so i've caught uh taught all the way from kindergarten to college and even professional tutoring so i i often people come to me for lessons even if they are professionals uh, I, the thing is, I just see things a little bit different. I know how to explain them a little bit better than most. So when people come to me with their problems, I'm normally able to explain it and help them through it because odds are I went through it. So I, yeah, I've had a long career of a lot of struggles. So I've developed a lot of little tips and knowledge about what needs to be done and how things need to transition from one step to the other. And that's why people come to me. That's why we have thousands of people that come here by the chat every single day. I am uh, 39 years young. I just turned 39 in December. So I turned 40 this year. That's going to be fun. Did you find college courses difficult to teach? Nope. I actually find it much easier to teach at a college level because people are ready to take it to the next level. When you're young, all you want to do is draw something cool. Like you don't care about foundations because you don't understand what foundations are supposed to be. And you don't understand the importance of when you're young. <laughs> when you're little, and I mean little, like I mean like 20, 25, or even younger than that. Like their main goal with our art is not to get better it's just to create something that people are going to actually want to look at that is what more people are concerned about rather than learning how to actually become solid artists because people want a shortcut people always want a shortcut but unfortunately there is really no shortcuts in the reason that so many people hate anatomy and perspective right so many people hate this shit is because when they were getting taught, they were just getting taught how to make fucking buildings. And they were told to do like landscapes and draw books and shit. Right? That's what they taught you to do. Like, oh, do this and oh, look at that apple and draw that stupid apple with that vase. Oh, yeah, that's going to make you a great artist. No, it's not. That's not going to make you a good artist. Because this is going to bore the living fuck out of you. And you're not going to want to do it anymore. Right? So boring perspective teachings ruin artists. Ruin artists. Why? Because it makes you feel like one of the most important things in the career... <laughs> And the things that you need to learn becomes boring. Therefore, it makes you not want to learn it. And if you don't learn it, then you base everything on style. And when you base everything on style, your, your limiter, right? Let's say like Mr. Timmy over here. 
Uh, and then, let, let's not deviate. Okay, hold on, hold on. I do this all the time. Let's not deviate. Let's go back to lips. <laughs> I have horrible ADHD brain, and we're going to run out of space with me explaining why, like, teachers suck at teaching perspective. Now, oh, where's my head? But yeah, like perspective is normally like taught in a very boring way. So, and a lot of the times, I promise you, it's because a lot of the people that teach it are not necessarily all that knowledgeable in it. So just because you teach art does not mean you understand it all that much, unfortunately. I'll talk about that uh, some other time. Uh, I want to finish lips, though, because lips is a very important thing. And m so many people draw lips so wrong. So, okay, let me explain to you guys the easiest way to make lips. Okay? If you want to make really cool lips, just draw an eye. So, let's say you have a mouth. Okay? And that mouth, you want some voluptuous lips. Well, what does this look like? Right? That looks like an eye. So the same thing is going to happen, only I'm going to add the lips inside of the eye. And now I have amazing, beautiful lips. Now... What's happening here is the same concept. This upper line right here, this one, is this one. This one on top is the depth of your eyelid. That little tiny depth that it has before it goes back up, that is the thickness of your lip. The bottom one is the same thing. It's that thickness of your eyelid is the same concept as your bottom lid. So when you're drawing lips in general, it's very easy to just draw an eyeball and then just draw your lips inside. And you end up with the super nice voluptuous lips. And you can change that shape around any way you want. So you want them to like be biting their lip or something. Right? It can be as easy as not drawing any lips and then just giving negative space for your mouth. Or you can take that same shape, add lips into the top and the bottom area, and now you have some nice little lips. Thin lips are the same, just thin, that's ultra thin, that's thin, if you wanted thicker lips than that. Just keep on adding volume to this. So you just keep on adding volume to this. But again, it's very important to understand how they connect. Because it's not just about making really thick, big shapes. It's not just about adding a really big shape. It's understanding how this connects. So the upper part of the lip, right? Think about the upper part of the rib. Oh, let me explain this better. Okay, okay. So when people draw mouths, they normally put two points and then they connect the lines, right? And they go like this. That's what they do 
when they draw mouths. This is how we're taught to draw mouths. This is wrong. Okay? Our lips connect at a flat angle. And this flat angle is going to give us the depth for our bottom lip. And it's going to give us depth for our upper lip. Okay? They connect on the bottom part of your mouth, of your upper lip, and they overlap, creating the crevice for your cheekbones or for your cheeks. This is more like a ribbon going around, kind of like this. That's what's happening here. Okay. It's going underneath and then curving out. That is what's happening here. And then the bottom lip, the bottom lip comes from underneath there and also from this crevice. So you get the front of the lip when you set it like this, you get the front of the lip and the back of the lip already. But since it's tangled up with this right here and a crevice, you don't see that and you just see the lip coming out. So once you have that, once you understand that and that little overlap, then it's easy to just stylize it, right? Because then you can just take that one big swoop, the top one, and then just create like these sort of shapes. And then you know that your upper lip, that's your upper lip. So you just draw it inside and connect it to the flat angle. And then your bottom lip has a little bit of an overlap, depending on what you want to do with it. And that is how, and if you want to add volume to it, just bring it out even more. What if you want like a pouty lip, right? If you want some ridiculous lips, like super big like lips, draw a super exaggerated thing it's the same concept and then just give these lips thickness they can be mouths can be closed too they don't always have to be open right so again once you start seeing no, I don't want to take your life. Once you start seeing... Oh, I think I turned on my TV. Oh my. There you go. So yeah, like once you start seeing things like... Seeing them like that, it's a lot easier to start playing around with the mouth shape. What do I do with the pen now? Right. So now we can start seeing it like a rubber band, right? We can go like one point, one point, connect, connect. And then I just fill in my lips depending on how big I want my lips. Flat, flat, rubber band. Uh, let's do a crazy one. Rubber band. Um, upper lip. Let's make it nice and pointy. And then the bottom lip. Super droopy. <laughs> Teeth line. And that's a big lip, right? But doesn't always have to be like that. And you can always play around with different shapes, different angles to see what would happen if a person had those. 
angle. See, see how far you can push it before it doesn't look right. Can I show us on the face? Yeah, I'm going to just do a, I'll draw a face right here. So let's say we're drawing just a regular face. And I'm drawing my nose. It's a diamond. The mouth. What type of mouth should be drawn? Goes around, flat. Chin. Jaw. This is your jaw, right? Some people don't know where this curves. This curves at the back where your teeth end. Right? If your teeth are there and your cheekbone is here. So that is what's happening there. When it curves up where your teeth end and your thing goes into your ear. The teeth? No, teeth are... Teeth are teeth? Hmm... You can get away with just making little U's. Right? So when you're drawing your teeth in there, just don't draw really don't draw really thick lines when you're drawing teeth. If you're gonna be drawing teeth inside your mouths, it's very important that you only signify the gums. And then a very slight indicator of the lines. If you do want to indicate really big gums or something like that. If you don't want to indicate that, you need to make sure that you just either do, you just leave negative space. Because that tends to be like the strongest indicator of like clean teeth. Like just, but if you really do want to add detail to the teeth, it's just a matter of understanding how your gums work with your teeth. And how they come in. And it's something you can pick up like from just watching yourself in the mirror and drawing a little bit. Like be you have all the reference material you need with a mirror. So it's just a matter of sitting down and actually practicing a little bit instead of trying to find somebody else to tell you what to do to make it easier on you. Some of these things are just easier to just go study, guys. Like just just you want to draw hands? Unless you're an amputee, you have a hand. Go draw your hand over and over. Take pictures of your hand. You don't know how to draw fingers? Take your finger and take a picture of every angle until you know how to bend a finger, lift a finger, point with a finger. For shortening is... Not that hard if you just take your phone, take a picture, and then trace it. Right? Like, we have all the technology in the world nowadays. Like, back when I was younger in the career, like, we didn't even really have, like, Pinterest was kicking off. Uh, we were like, like, oh, my God, there's references for everything now. Like, we had to scour, like, DeviantArt and all that crap for like any sort of go like good references. Now you guys have all of that at the palm of your hands. Like it baffles my brain that people can't just go sometimes and just go onto a mirror and draw themselves, observe a little bit. And then you know, some of these things are very basic. Not the mouth things and not the nose things. Those aren't basic, those are kind of complex shapes. But when it comes down to drawing, let's say, like plants and stuff like that, you have to go out and you have to go draw plants. They can't tell you to draw plants. <clears throat> you know how hard it is to try to explain to someone how to draw like a basic box? That is one of the hardest things possible. Like explain to someone how to teach someone how to draw a cube is one of the most complex things that I have come across as a teacher. Like, sit down and try to teach a kid how to draw a cube. 
<laughs> if you think you know perspective, sit down and try to explain to a little kid that does not know how to draw, how to draw a cube. If you can manage that, then you know perspective. The connection point between the lip and the mouth on the nose. So if you have your nose, right, and you want to know how much space to leave between that and the mouth, imagine giving your character a mustache. If you give yourself a mustache, but you don't draw the mustache, this bottom mustache line is where your mouth should be. If it looks too big, you do the mustache too big. Get used to drawing it a little bit smaller. It's going to, since so many people have so many different looks in their faces, this spacing is very subjective, right? It really depends on what you want to create with the character. Do you want it to be a nice little pinup? Do you want it to be a uh, redneck or an ogre or a giant? It's understanding what you're running into here that is going to be important. It's not necessarily that you know the spacing between the nose and the lips. You should know the spacing between the nose cavity and the teeth line. That is the spacing that you should be looking for. Right? Because this person right here has a very little nose cavity to teeth line. But this person has a much bigger one. Okay? So it's very dependent on your understanding of the basic principles of what the skull is doing, more so than the understanding of just trying to like shortcut your way into understanding this area. So if you learn this, you'll know that you have a certain spacing right there between your lips and your nose. Uh, we, we can do eyes tomorrow. That was, that's a good transition from this. So I will do a bunch of eyes tomorrow. That's what we will do for our Friday sketch session. That's a good idea. idea though. Uh, those are always really like fun to do. Maybe we'll do a hundred eye challenge if I have time. What time does the live start? Uh, do you have a video on foreshortening? No, I do not have a video on foreshortening, but I'm going to show you the easiest way to learn how to foreshorten in like two seconds, okay? If you do this, practice this today, and by the end of today, you'll know how to foreshorten like a fucking champ. Start with a two ovals, okay? Take those ovals and slowly start putting them one over the other. Little by little. Start making the back oval smaller if you want the big, the one in the front to look bigger. Start making the one in the back bigger if you want the front one to look smaller. I want you to do a page of these and actually take notes like this does this, this does that. And then start combining them. So one something like this would be this. This would be this. And this would just be this. So just do that. And then things like legs 
arms, feet, all that becomes easy. That literally becomes child's play. And then it's just a matter of your knowledge of anatomy to take it to the next level. Right? Faces too. As we can see in different faces, like these also have that same concept, right? All of them approach the same way. You can see the markings of where I go in and I make those decisions. Uh, here's another one of lips. So if you guys want to look at another one that talks about mouths in general, as opposed to just lips, go to see Sketch Stream number 59. Those are under my live section of my YouTube channel, guys. It's not my normal videos. It's in the live. So you guys will see about like 70 or 80, like 75, 80 different videos in the live section. Um, but yeah, we talk about mouths a lot. <laughs> uh, this one was about oh, cute animals, how to draw cute animals. So that one's pretty cool. Uh, let's see. Yeah, but that foreshortening technique, that little tiny trick is going to be the one that helps you be able to come up with cool poses like that very easy. And it's a very simple exercise to do. See? See what I mean? It's just like an overlap of two cylinders. And then little by little, you learn how to overlap more things. You learn the order of how things connect. And let's see, what else did we draw lately? Oh, yeah, and... Essentially, this is how you find your style, right? You find your style by using your foundations of perspective, knowledge of your topic. In this case, it's anatomy, clothing, weapons, animals, whatever. So perspective plus your knowledge of whatever equals, oh, plus your imagination equals your style. That is how you get your style as an artist. It takes very, very long sometimes because people forget to learn this step. They just want to jump here. They just want to do those two. But they don't want to do that because that's boring. So focus on that first. This is going to come naturally because you already know what you want to draw. The knowledge is going to come. That's going to be the easiest part. The knowledge, if you really are interested in the topic, the knowledge is going to be easy. The imagination and the knowledge of the perspective are the hard part. Because you need to be original and you need to be skillful enough to draw as good as everybody else. No, foundations... Okay, okay. Let me explain to you guys what the basic foundations are for, like, drawing. The very basics are often confused by people. So basics or foundations or are as follows. No, it is... No. Shadows don't play a fucking role in any foundation work. Bam. So please, boom. Don't even consider that at first. Your foundations in art if you want to be able to create absolutely anything from your imagination at some point, or even from reference, your knowledge of perspective and understanding how to visualize an object in space not doesn't have to be like on a perspective grid or anything like that. doesn't have to be in like that whole like one point, two point, three point, whatever. doesn't have to be that. But it has to be something that you can use to map something in space. So if you have a box, you can easily divide it, right? Those divisions give you places where you can put things. In this case, it could be like four little faces. It could be like a mouth. Anything of this is a grid. This is giving you playing area so that you can play with it. You can do whatever you want within that grid. When you start taking that into a more complex shape with more sides 
that gives you a lot more flexibility to be able to draw things coming out of the shape. Right? Things extending, things going in. You know, depending on what you want to do with it, this little basic knowledge of negative spaces and extrusions from your basic shape is more like sculpting. But without that grid and that way of subdividing it, you would never be able to do this efficiently. And how this applies to, you know, like characters and stuff like that later on is that you take your shapes and little by little you learn how to develop body systems that allow you to be able to draw your characters. Right? So this is the type of perspective you need to learn. Subdiv- subdividing perspective is what how I call it. Like I'm pretty sure there's an actual term for it. But that's what I like to use it for. Right? And that doing that enough and the exercises that I give you guys will allow you to just be able to draw characters much better because you'll be actually applying what you learn as opposed to just doodling. Because no matter how much you draw, if you don't draw with the purpose of learning, it's really hard to get to a certain outcome. So, yeah, well, we talked about feet yesterday, I think, and bodies. So you guys can check that out too. Uh, so I'm going to sign off now but because I just want to go do things in the day. Uh, thank you guys so much, guys. Uh, I hope you guys learned a lot. I hope you guys enjoyed our lesson. If you guys did enjoy the lesson, uh, if you guys want to support, there are books you guys can purchase. I have Art Block, which is a combination of all our little lessons from streams and a bunch. It's like it's like a hundred pages of just like things like this that you can flip to and learn a little bit from, and then just you know that's Art Block. Coffee Break Doodles is a collection of my. It's my gallery of collections, my favorite doodles that I've done over my years. And then we have pinups, which is a collection of beautiful ladies, because I like to draw pinups quite a bit. Beautiful little ladies, not necessarily like this, but with cute animals and just like overall, like a lot of hot ladies in that pinups book. You can find my books in my stand link on my bio right here on TikTok, or you can go to my Instagram, which is the same, Rodgon the Artist, and you can buy them through there. The time, I'm going to start my live tomorrow probably a little earlier. That way I can actually have time to do the 100 face, uh, the 100 eye challenge, or 100, yeah, something like that would be fun. So we'll do 100 eye challenge tomorrow at let's say 10 o'clock pacific that should be good enough to leave me time to that and i have a magic the gathering tournament at night so all right well hope you guys learned something if you guys do and you guys have not subscribed please go like the channel go do all that crap um i i suck at it i don't i don't ask that shit enough But if you guys did learn what you wanted, maybe you guys will come back and you guys will join me tomorrow as well. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Talk to you guys later.